Hey guys, welcome to video number four in our series. This time we're looking at New Orleans Square and looking for, again, secrets, tips, fun things in the area. And I think that maybe above any other area, uh, New Orleans Square has some of the coolest little hidden treasures within. Uh, and so to start out, uh, one thing that's really, really cool here is, and well, it's under construction right now. They're doing some refreshes and updates here, but uh, is the uh, railroad stop here. And so the train station, if you can hear the tapping away. Not sure how well that's picking up, but uh, hopefully it's okay. Um, but basically, um, it's a really cool little hidden thing of Disney, but that is Morse code for opening day speech that Walt Disney gave uh, when obviously Disneyland first opened. It's just kind of a really fun thing. Uh, if you're not familiar with it and you walk through this area, it's you know, probably wondering, what's that tapping away? It's, it's very odd. I, I know before I knew that it was just kind of an, an odd little thing that I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to, thought maybe it was, I don't know, some construction thing or something, a machine off kilt or something like that. But knowing actually what it is uh, really adds some extra flavor because New Orleans Square, as I said, I think it just has more little secrets and fun things. I don't know if it has a ton of, you know, great tips for, you know, getting on Haunted Mansion quicker or things like that. But the area itself has so many hidden gems in it uh, that I think maybe more than any other area, it kind of grabs my attention and is a fun thing to share with people. So we're going to take a look at some of those as we make our way through New Orleans Square. The corridors of New Orleans Square provide a ton of fun little uh, tidbits and secrets and things to find. Okay. One of the greatest probably being Club 33, the uh, very famous, uh, somewhat secret, but definitely private club. And so right here is the new door to 33. It is much more visible than in the past. It's not quite as hidden. The classic doorway is still uh, down the way. Uh, but this is the new entry point. But what's kind of cool, uh, maybe some disagree, <laughs> they find it a bit obtrusive with the new updates, but I kind of like it, is being able to kind of see up inside of the area. And so before it was very much hidden away. There wasn't the glass. There wasn't the same view uh, perspective or any of that. And now it is much more um, obvious on the exterior. So as you're making your way around New Orleans Square, if you look up, oftentimes you'll be able to see directly into the club. Behind the doors, if you're ever fortunate enough to make it in there, the Court of Angels is there, which is an awesome piece of Disney history as well. It's one of the most uh, probably photographed areas uh, uh, in New Orleans Square, a lot of fun there. And then obviously there's still the classic Club 33 doorway, again, above it, the club itself. So fun stuff. There's a lot of uh, secrets to 33 itself. I know for us, before we ever visited there, we really tried to stay away from spoilers, even as it's reopened with Salon Nouveau and all of that. Uh, we tried to stay as spoil-free as possible. That being said, uh, it's really pretty tremendous and pretty fun all the way around in there. As we talked about in one of our earlier videos, uh, the dining options at Disneyland are a bit limited when it comes to the nicer dining. I mean, obviously, Club 33 is going to be off limits for most of us. Uh, so Blue Bayou kind of becomes the restaurant in all of Disneyland. Um, it's not really my number one preference or really uh, many of the people that I'm good friends with. But that being said, it is a very unique experience. It is something to check out for sure. Um, you can just wander in there to take a look. It is by far the most thematic. Uh, dining experience in D Disneyland. Actually, the only thing that comes close to it, I think, is Trader Sam's at the Disneyland Hotel. Uh, so Blue Bayou is definitely a must-see. You are able to sit right there uh, alongside the river as Pirates of the Caribbean boats float by, and that's really awesome. Uh, but it is pricey, and definitely make reservations um, as soon as you know that you want to want to get in there. Uh, try and do it weeks in advance if possible. Uh, we've come and just been able to wander in sometimes, and you know they're giving you see people checking in now and getting buzzers and things like that and that that can work as well but definitely much better to get a reservation if possible so as i said i mean there's nothing more beautiful in terms of theming than eating at the blue bayou so again very pricey but especially if you're only going to make it out to disneyland a few times if it's not an you know an every month type thing or whatever it is well worth the price to check it out um but as i said the menu is not my most favorite there aren't a ton of things that i've loved and felt was worth the price um but you pay for the experience and and a beautiful experience it very much is. 
Another dining experience, to be honest, one we don't really partake in very often, though, is the Cafe Orleans. This is another um, restaurant. So I guess when I said Blue Bayou is kind of the only real uh, place in that vein. It's not quite true. The only thing about the Cafe Orleans is so much of the seating is outside and with the grueling heat of most of the year at Disneyland, uh, not always the most fun place to stay. But they have an interesting mes menu there, obviously keeping in line with the traditions of New Orleans. So it is another sit-down restaurant opportunity and they do give free refills, which again is a rare thing at Disneyland. So Blue Bayou and Cafe Orleans both fit that bill. Now even if you come to Disney Disneyland once a day every day for the whole year it's hard to leave at least for me it is uh, without riding Haunted Mansion it's just such a cool ride it's amazing that it's 45 years old as of the recording of this it's held up so well uh, and attracts crowds that still uh, outdo many of the other attractions in uh, this park or even Disney World um, but one thing that a lot of people don't know there are, well there's actually a couple things here one the uh, long rumored death certificates that the cast members will give you has been kind of a spotty thing. I believe as of the recording, they are not doing it as kind of the official line, but that's been something that's kind of come back and disappeared over time, much like the maps uh, when riding the Jungle Cruise. So it never hurts to ask. You know, the worst that the cast member can say is, no, we're not doing it. But uh, depending when you're listening to this in the future it, or viewing this, it is possible that that's something that's returned. The other thing that is sometimes accessible, sometimes not, is behind the mansion is a pet cemetery, which is really cool to see. Uh, the fact that it's just, you know, this add-on to the story that's so secluded and 99.9% uh, .9 of the people visiting the park will never actually see it. Um, the first time we did it, it was with Club 33 members um, on a VIP tour and they were able to kind of hook us up and get us back there. Uh, but we've done it also on our own, just asking a cast member. It really depends how crowded they are, how busy they are, of whether or not they can allow for that or um, give the time for that. One last thing in this area. At the end of the ride, there is the ghost that will follow you home. Uh, you can hear that right here. So as you leave the ride, take a second after you come up the turnstile, listen up the ghost voices. You can hear them kind of cackling in the background. That is the ghost that follows you home. A very cool little extra thing uh, to know about the mansion. One of the best kept secrets of areas to kind of hide out from the crowds, even on the busiest days, is over here behind the Harbor Galley um, at Fowler's. And so um, right now it's a, you know, again, a weeknight uh, in February. So it's not a super crowded time anyway. Um, but it is always kind of a nice hidden away spot. And so if we kind of cut our way here, again, we're right across from Haunted Mansion and make our way back. This is a walkway a lot of people don't even know exist uh, that visit Disneyland because it is kind of off the beaten track. So you've got Fowler's Inn. It's got its own cool history that uh, you might be curious to look up. But also you've got a bunch of seating back here and you've got accessible pathways across to um, Hungry Bear in that area. And then obviously it's a great view just looking out at the water. All right, we're going to wrap up our New Orleans Square video right here. It's just about time for Fantasmic. Actually, it's about 45 minutes out. But anyway, you can see the craziness. We talked about this in our video on Adventureland, just kind of avoiding this area at night. Uh, we're here, obviously, for filming purposes. Uh, that being said, to wrap it up, you can't really see it in the dark here. But uh, make sure to take a look above Pirates of the Caribbean from just about this spot in uh, New Orleans Square as you're transitioning to Frontierland to look for a giant mast and a very cool pirate ship from just the right angle. So this is about the spot in here. I think usually right about that tree uh, is a good area to stand to see that. So it's a really cool thing, kind of hidden away up there. Definitely take a look for it, and especially in the daytime. So we'll wrap up here from New Orleans Square. Thank you for viewing. Uh, again, any comments, suggestions, uh, other tips that you want to share with people, please leave them in the comments. Uh, until next time, we'll see you in line somewhere.